Okay, let's do a uh, review number two of the Fazari Fire Peak, my friend. Okay, the first one I covered a lot of general reviews. I'm not a YouTuber by trade, so, uh, but I like the chunk, I like the chowder. So I'm here at San Jose, California. If you're traveling and you're in the Bay Area, bring your bike and do a Rocky Ridge Trail. If you like a, a nice boulder field, riding on what Mars will look like when Elon uh, terraforms it or whatever they call that. Anyways, so let's get back to this bike. Still love it. Thing's amazing. Things I like most about it, uh, I got the, I'm glad I got the Pro. Really love this suspension. I mean, this is my normal trail that I do. Generally once a week, if not twice. This thing's just, it's a good mile and a half of this. And a boulder field galore. You know, and then uh, you, of course you got, you're on the Fazari webpage, so you hear what they talk about. And so the 36 Fox Fork, the uh, Performance Elite just is awesome. I don't know that much about it. You know, like you tune it, you have a small damper for the small bumps and then a, the big bump compression thing. I don't know much about that. I read the directions, dialed it a little bit, happy with it. You can see how far I used it today. So this is a 160 travel, I believe. Look at them up there. The back's 140. And, uh, the most I did is here. Recently I did there. Uh, the first part of the trail I come down faster. This is a little slower. So I'd say, okay, Fazari, the next bike, what would I like? Because I'll buy your next one, obviously. Uh, I think 160 is perfect for me in the front. Ah, let's go 150 in the rear. Come on. It's, it's 10, 10 among friends. Let's bump it up. Anyways, the XT brakes, oh, come on. They're a must. Look at those things. Those things. I come down some. I, I'm not a big fire trail guy. I kind of like this chunk stuff. But when you come down some smoking hot trail or even this stuff, you need braking. The XTs are amazing. They've never overheated on me. This ice technology has worked out great. Uh, it's been hard. Um, I'm at 1,700 miles now on this thing. I uh, ran out of. I couldn't find any brake pads, so I put uh, the Saints in. So if you're in a jam, the Saints will fit. They stick up a little more. It's okay. Cooling fins are probably actually more accessible. And so these things at 1,700 miles. I'm going to replace the brakes again. They're good for around 1,000 miles the way I ride. And I'll replace that at the 2,000 miles. Uh, so XT, huge fan. Maintaining them super easy. You know, you got to bleed the brakes every so often. Turn it up, straight up take that cap out you buy this little kit for like less than twenty dollars and it uses mineral oil so you don't have to use that toxic dot stuff put it in there put some in squeeze the thing recap it bam you're bled super easy i mean really you don't need any big skills if you go with the shimanos another reason to get the pro uh, another thing uh I, yeah i could talk about before i changed the seat i like the flatter seat because i tend to ride the seat lower and i'll sit on the back Sometimes um, the other one's a nice idea, but eh, not a fan. Love the big platform pedals, work out great. I use the uh, Ride Concept shoes. I like the thing that holds your shoelaces there. I used to use hiking shoes, but I find with hiking shoes, they really stick. You know, you put them on and boy, you just are stuck to the pedal. Where uh, regular mountain biking shoes, you can still move around if you need to. The big platforms are great because I'm not I'm not a pro rider, you know. I call myself a solid intermediate, and sometimes whatever you lose your foot balance, and it's great to have a big forgiving platform there. Uh, the XT shifter works great. See, I just oiled it. Look at all that junk. Got to clean that up, huh? Uh, everything's worked flawlessly. I really haven't had to do much maintenance. Uh, talk about maintenance let's say okay you're buying this thing so you're not a normal bike shop you don't know anything how to fix things hey here's the bottom line it's really simple 
brakes, well, they basically work or they don't. So that's about it. Um, on this thing, you have these two screws. All these two screws are about. One keeps the derailleur from going past the big sprocket. The other one keeps it from going in here. That's all you need to know on there. So that's usually adjusted when you get it. And then if it's skipping in gears, in and out, you know, like, ta -ta 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 -ta, you basically just need to adjust right here, the bolt adjuster. That's it. Give it a, a quarter screw each time, one of the ways. Uh, you'll figure it out and go watch another YouTube video. That's it. Uh, I got the tubeless tires. Yeah, you're going to have to refill the tubeless tires. Probably go buy something like this, a core remover. And buy some extra st these stem inserts. And you just, I'd say every six months or whatever, add the two ounces or whatever of a, uh, the, uh, what do they call it, the sealant. And uh, pretty easy. You just add it straight through there. Carry a bike pump because uh, tubeless tires do leak. Um, no problem. Uh, other other things, you know, uh, I'd like from Fazari is the next bike. Let's go with a bigger battery. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about some other things on this thing. So, yeah, I'd like a bigger battery. The 504 is it's great when you're on your own. Uh, you know, I can get around, I would say the tops I can get is around. 3,800 foot climb, right around 28 miles is where I'm on red. Most of my bike rides are around 16 miles to 22 at around the 2,800 mile, I mean 2,800 foot climb. And there, no problem, the 504 is great. Where I have problems when you ride with other e-bikers, for some reason you get a bunch of dudes together and the testosterone just kicks in and everybody picks up the pace. And when they pick up the pace, instead of being in eco mode, you're, you're in trail mode. Instead of being in trail mode, you're in boost mode. And so that's what happens. Okay, and then the last thing I want to cover on in this thing is... Uh, they talk about the short chain stay. And everyone says it's like more playful and things like that. So I've readjusted the bike. This is what short chain stay means to me. The rear wheel travels closer to the front wheel. So when you're doing little jump offs like this and you're not jumping, you're just going to roll off. You still clear. Look at that. This is a 29 inch wheel and this drop off is about to there. So this drop off and it goes further down is about probably 19 inches and we're still clear and the back wheel's even lower. So with that short chain stay, if you ride shunder like this, which is my normal trail, it's the way to go. If you've got a long chain stay, okay, that's great for bombing down a nice fire road or something, okay. But it's not gonna do this. To put it in perspective, why do Jeeps four wheel drive so nicely? Because they're short, they climb over things and they just roll over things like this. But then you get in a nice long four door Jeep. Okay, well, you're gonna do some scraping. And so you can, same thing with the bike. So for me, the short chain stay is awesome. And you can dance with the rocks when you come into things like this and you've got these loose rocks. You know, like this thing's loose, you don't wanna hit a loose rock. And so you can just dance in between all these rocks and stuff great because it follows so closely behind that front wheel hey so with that i'm signing off that's it so party on and have a great time hey fazari i love this bike i don't know when the next model's coming up the uh wire peak 2 um can't wait because i need two of them so i can uh lure my friends into the e-bike e world but it is definitely a game changer. If you got into mountain biking and the, the climbing the hills was just too much, well, hey, e-bike's it. If you're more enthusiastic about these downhills with all this chunder and thrill, yeah, yeah, this is what it's about. And another thing about it, when there's uh, people on the path, pedestrians and hikers, 
Uh, it's great on an e-bike because you have no problem slowing down and stopping for them because you can get your momentum up just in, you know, three or four pedal strokes and you're up and going again, so it's not a big loss. And so it's, it's really a game changer. Uh, e-bikes will be the future, just like snowboards were back in the 80s. They, uh, they weren't welcomed at first, but uh, try finding a ski resort where their number one customer is in snowboards. And that's what's going to happen with e-bikes. Guarantee it. And it's up to us to behave properly so we can get more trails. Hey, rock and roll. So uh, when you get your e-bike, join the e-bike club and uh, support e-bike laws. Thanks, man. Party on.